students draw themselves, Shrek eyes it, and then write, I am who I am. And then maybe if we have a little extra time, have a little fun with the drawing too. This is great, and it's a very exciting program. Now we're going to get to the most exciting part, where we're going to try caricature. And let me spell the word first. It's C-A-R, so the word car, I, C A T Cat U R E Caricature. Caricature. And the way I think of caricature is it's a it's an exaggeration of somebody's uh, body and facial features. Now you can have a mild exaggeration, you can have an extreme exaggeration, but there's the word exaggeration creative exaggeration in there somewhere. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to use my face as an example. Uh, you can see, just take a, I, I invite you to take a closer look at my face, and you can see that the eyes really are about halfway up the head, between the top of the head and the bottom of the chin. Now, I would not say that my face is angular looking, I would say it's kind of like roundish shapes, and if I was to do a caricature of myself, I'd probably use roundish shapes. So, again, looking at somebody's face, you notice things like how dark are the eyebrows? Are they thin? Are they thick? How big is the nose? Is it a very thin nose? Is it a, a nose that's shaped like a strawberry? Are the facial features roundish? Are they angulish? Uh, these kind of things make a big difference. So, why don't I draw myself? I know what I look like. Anyway, so if I was to draw myself, I would just use a very, very round shape like that. Sort of a round nose like this. I'd move the eyes slightly closer together like two little black beads. I know I have dark, arched eyebrows like this. I always seem to be smiling, so why don't we go ahead and do that. And then uh, throw in a little bit of hair. This. And here I am as a caricature. And again, in the theme of what we're doing, if we want to turn this into like a Shrek kind of caricature. All I do is give myself little Shrek ears like this, kind of fun. And then along the top, I'll say, I am who I am. And that's kind of fun. This is the point that I'm really asking for your help, because you're probably wondering, well, how am I going to get my students to draw a caricature of themselves? I mean, how, how are we going to do it step by step? And I don't blame you for having those questions. So the first thing to do is to help the students prepare, sort of get them in the mood. Um, you know what? <laughs> You know, let's, let's do something just on the side. Let's have a little bit of fun. This is not off topic. You know how in sports, for example, they have all the athletes like do all these exercises and things like that? Why don't we have a little bit of fun? Instead of going directly for the project, why don't we do some just warm-up exercises? Why don't we do something like just give them a piece of paper and ask them to warm up a little bit. Just do shapes, any which way. You can't get it wrong. There's no way to get it wrong. Dots, curves, squares. Just have a little bit of fun. Loosen them up a little bit. They may want to have a tendency to try to erase these marks. Again, tell them there's nothing wrong here. There's nothing wrong at all. As a matter of fact, you can take even something like this, this doodle of a square, and if I really, really wanted to, I can turn the square 
into a cube. And we're just at the warm-up stage here. But think, get them in the mood a little bit. Maybe do some, some uh, warm, warm up sketches. And uh, that'll be fun. Now that we've done the warm up exercises, let's, let's make sure they have another blank piece of paper but then let's just invite them to look at their friends, to look at a friend that's, that's near them, and, and just kind of look at the friend, and just notice the shapes of the face. Like, you know, does the friend have a, a skinny head? Does the friend maybe have a roundish head? Does the friend have a lot of hair on top of the lid, or maybe no hair at all? Um, eyebrows thick, eyebrows thin. Start to notice these things, and it's okay. You're usually allowed to get within about three feet of somebody, and really, really take a fresh look at what they look like. And that's a big step in terms of seeing better, and then we can go to the next step, because those shapes of their heads, and maybe even our own heads, start to enter our brain, and once it's in the head, now we have to transfer it to the paper. So what we'll do is basically two drawings. Let's ask the students to draw somebody else as practice to lead up to them drawing themselves, where they have to accept themselves. And I just got an invitation. My wife volunteered that I would like to draw her. So I'm going to squint. I'm going to look at her face and look at it so carefully and make sure that uh, I get a little sense of my wife's uh, face. Now, I'm starting with a blank piece of paper, and she has kind of a roundish face, so I'll give her that. She parts her hair over her left eye, so I'll nudge the hair a little bit that way. And she has small eyes. She has an ovaly head and ovaly eyeglasses. A little nose, nice smile. And these again are just pencil finding lines, little pencil finding lines. And uh, now that I think I have a rough idea of where I want to go because of the pencil finding lines, now I will take an ink pen and just ink in the lines that I want to keep. So I'm going to start at the top of the head. She has ovaly eyeglasses. Smile. And that's the beginning of where we're going. If I was to do a caricature of Cindy, Maybe what I would do is maybe I would extend the head a little bit higher. Just a little bit higher. She always has this wave in her hair. So let's give him what she's got. And maybe make the hair extra fluffy. So we congratulated the student by not only drawing themselves, but also adding some details that turn them a little bit into a Shrek character, which is a lot of fun. And then they put in the theme, I am who I am. In other words, accept yourself, no matter what kind of changes happen in life. Accept yourself for who you are. And now, if you have a little bit of extra time, and who knows, if you're inspired, we can even play more games with this. Again, I dedicated this talk to Steve Jobs uh, in the beginning, 
and I happen to have an iPad too. Let me show you what I would do with this new tool applied to art. I would actually go over here and then actually take a picture of this picture like this. Now, now I actually have a picture of the artwork here on the iPad 2. And from this photograph that I just took of this sketch, I put it into a drawing application. Uh, in this case, it's called Art Studio. And if I want to color the face, um, I can do that with this coloring program here. And you can see that the face is changing and it's becoming a little bit more like Shrek that we know. And I can do some hair color like this. And so we can use technology if it's handy, if it's handy to do this kind of thing, uh, to just make the drawing um, even more kind of interesting. And then this can be put on somebody's Facebook page, it can be sent as a piece of email. I mean, as soon as this is created, it can just fly off the, uh, the drawing area. And that's really the big difference. It's like a poet being able to publish their poetry. It's so important to get your work away from you and then show the rest of the world. And that's what we want you to do to help your students uh, do this kind of thing. Of course, if an iPad is not handy, then we can go back to the regular drawing and then grab some markers or grab some uh, uh, crayons. And again, just go in there and just do some coloring and just change it around a little bit to uh, to really give a sense of the theme of self-acceptance no matter, no matter what we're going through. So you can use crayons, you can use uh, uh, markers. Uh, the more colors, the better sometimes, it makes it more interesting. And then finally, just a hint, a hint of something in the background like this. And according to uh, a rubric, if a student did this and really brought it to the end in terms of uh, a drawing like this, and, and if they made a comment about how they feel about this drawing, uh, if they critique their own work, um, I would give them an A myself. So, now let's review everything. So step one is going to be to use appropriate materials. And again, we're not using anything exotic. This is very, very simple. It's paper with no lines on it, a common pencil, Crayola markers because they have low smell or no smell, and a kneaded eraser. So again, very common items to get going on our drawings. Two, identify the shapes in our environment and on our faces. So like for example, things like windows are rectangles, a clock is a circle, and then does somebody have a nose like a, like a, like a strawberry or, uh, or a thin little nose, things like that. Um, and then why not loosen up? Step three would be some warm-up exercises. And step four is where it gets to be the most fun. You get a chance to observe and draw a friend's face for practice. So you notice if the head is, is, uh, is skinny, is husky, uh, does the head look like a football player, does the head look like a little bit of a bean, uh, that kind of thing. Especially look in the area of the nose and the eyes. Is the nose uh, big like a strawberry or thin? Um, are the eyes, do they go up in the corners? Do they go down the corners? Really take a close look at your friend and then try to make a, a very good practice sketch. So look for shapes and then go ahead and do that uh, sketch in pencil and then later ink over the lines that you want to keep. And then step six would be to what we call Shrek eyes, the drawing. And you know, add those little qualities, those little characteristics that we know and love from the main Shrek characters. 
Um, and then write somewhere, I am who I am. So hopefully you'll come up with a drawing similar to this. The Shrek Ising is partially from, oh, I, I have a little toy over here. I have a little toy that was the inspiration to learn how to draw Shrek a little bit better. And that's something that I would recommend that kids do. Uh, why don't you look at some of your toys and just make sketches of the toys that you know and love. And this particular toy is kind of fun and it reminds me very much of the Shrek head. So if the students did something like this, and again, if all the artwork was collected and protected, maybe in a plastic bag to make sure that water doesn't hurt the artwork, you could have an art show. You can have an art show of the student work, and who knows, if we take the theme of Shrek to heart and really accept ourselves as we change in life, no matter all the changes that we go on in life, um, it'll be very, very uplifting. It, it could make a difference in terms of positive behavior. Uh, it also could make a big difference with how we treat each other. A lot of talk these days about not bullying each other, and that's exactly through the theme of Shrek, that we have to accept each other and encourage each other, affirm each other. So let's, let's make bullying a thing of the past, you know? It's so boring anyway. Um, and let's affirm each other. And I'll look forward to seeing the students work. I'll look forward to getting feedback and response from both the teachers, the students. And I want to just give a big thank you again to everybody at the Rochester Broadway Theater League for even caring and making this happen. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And thank you to the teachers, thank you to the parents, the students, and you're great. And look forward to drawing and, and have a good time.